you'd be surprised when something spills in these things, the tiniest crevices the liquid could get into and cause a problem. I would not believe where the motherboard looks perfectly fine, but there's this one unexposed area, and once you expose that, you see that the liquid actually leaked into there. Okay, so I just fast-forwarded getting that screen off. There was these one, two, three, four screws on each side. Just wanted to show you there real quick. I must have had a problem, so I had to edit that out of the tape. And now we're just going to take screws out of the top part of the case that are holding the top part of the case to the bottom case. And some of the screws are in there pretty tight. Just look for any screw that could be holding the two parts of the case together. Sometimes you'll unscrew a screw that isn't actually isn't holding the case together, but that's okay because it's better to have more screws out than to have them in and then you have to break something to get the cases apart. And it looks like all the screws, just want to make sure. Once you're sure and all the ribbon cables are detached, you can start trying to pull the cases apart. Just find a corner that looks like it would be the loosest or easiest one to get off and then kind of go around the edge once you got to start. I like to take my, my fingernail, if I can, and take it right along the edge there and just try to pop it up nice and gently as you go along the outside perimeter of the laptop. And remember, if it feels like you have to force something, there's probably a screw or something holding it in. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Now we got a nice, good look at the motherboard. Now there's that black panel there. I'm not quite sure what that is. That might be speakers or something of the sort. Also, if you see the, the black sticky tape on top of the motherboard, it's also a good idea to look under parts of that, too, for corrosion when you're trying to determine whether liquid got onto a motherboard and did some damage. Water seeps into the craziest of places. Yeah, and those black, that black thing I'm trying to take off there, that's the speakers. Going to hit it with some compressed air. Any place you see some dust or dirt, clean it up while you have the chance here. Speakers tend to get a lot of stuff in them because they're exposed to the outside through, you know, the speaker grate. So things fall in through the, the holes for the speaker and land in the speaker. And once you determine that there's no corrosion on the top side of the motherboard there, you can start putting everything back together. And I always like to dust things before I put them back together just because I, now I have an opportunity to do it, which I probably will not have in the future. So make sure everything's fastened down properly and start putting it back together. Now, what I was doing as I was bending that black piece back, you know, a couple minutes ago, is I was looking at the underside of the motherboard as well. It turns out I didn't really have to take the whole motherboard out. 
I was able to see under the motherboard and I inspected it that way and there didn't appear to be any corrosion on the underside so I think we're okay now again this is just a precaution the customer only said that some keys weren't working but whenever they tell me they spilled something into the machine this is what I like to do it's better to be safe and better to make sure the motherboards clean this way the computer actually lasts it might only run for a month if there still is liquid down there Okay, you got to make sure everything goes back flush the way it was. If it appears that something's not going in properly, inspect it and see what's causing that problem. Okay, it looks like we got it handled there. So we're going to start screwing the screws back in the machine. Now I'm going to speed up this recording so again not to bore you guys the screws go in in the same configuration we took them out so it's pretty self-explanatory attach the touchpad ribbon cable there let's get the rest of the screws back in Get the screen back on. The LCD cable. Now it's time to get the screws in on the bottom. Now we're going to feed that wireless antenna back through the hole. Now reattach the keyboard, mount the keyboard, snap it in, make sure that's screwed in properly. Attach any screws that we missed. Now we're going to install the hard drives. cover back on, screw that on, make sure everything is flush. Install the RAM, install the wireless card, screw it down and attach the antenna. Put that hinge cover plate back on. Put the battery back in. Now we're back to normal speed. I'm going to attach the AC adapter. Power this on. See what happens. Now I actually want to try it with the battery out just to make sure it's getting the pure AC power and it's not the battery that's powering the machine. And it's lighting up, it's powering on, everything looks okay. So we still have to get that keyboard, waiting for that keyboard to come in. We did order it, but in the meantime, if you want to use this machine and some of the keys aren't working, you can use an external keyboard through USB. This is a $10 USB external keyboard I got at Micro Center, real small mini one. Very cheaply built, but very handy. 
Now, just be aware when you do USB keyboards that sometimes the drivers have to be loaded before they work. In this case, it worked right away, so we're okay with that. But now, you know, I consider this computer done except for the keyboard replacement. We're, we're confident there's no corrosion on the motherboard. Nothing is fried. Nothing's going to go bad. Everything looks clean, so it's good that we did that test. And that's going to be it for this video. Thanks again.